The World Without Visas, Around the World with Valeri Shannon. The campaign on the Carrion Trail became the next stage of the World Without Visas project, within which Valeri Shannon travels only around the countries visa free for Russians. On this travel, his fellow travelers were Katya Klementieva and Violeta Shanina. Turkey, the Carrion Trail. In ancient times, on the territory of the present Turkish provinces, Mugla and Aydin, was the state of Karya. In the north, it bordered with Lydia. In the northeast, with Phrygia and Pisidia. In the east, with Lycia. Karya, one of the most picturesque regions of Turkey. There is everything here. Ancient ruins, paved stone caravan roads, hillsides, goat tracks, godforsaken villages, pine woods, olive and almond trees, vineyards and sea beaches. In 2013, across Karya's territory, was laid a 820 km long walking tourist route. The Karian Trail, or in Turkish Karya Yolu, is marked by standard red-white mark. It is possible to travel on it without a guide. It is enough to acquire the detailed guide with the map. Yunus Ozdemir was the ideological inspirer of the Karian Trail. He personally participated in its creation and description. He is one of the co-authors of the Karian Trail Guide and precisely knows which sites are the most interesting and which ones, if need be, can be passed. The Carian Trail is presently poorly known. There are no tourists traveling on it, absolutely none. There are no tourist infrastructures as well. Guest houses and restaurants are rare. Nevertheless, it is possible to count on the hospitality of locals. But it is better to be autonomous, to travel with a reliable tent and to cook food on a fire. There is a lot of water. Springs and wells can often be encountered. Finding firewood is not a problem. It is not forbidden to kindle fires. It is only necessary to observe the safety measures for fire. It is possible to go on the trail at all seasons of the year, but it is ideal to travel in the fall or in the spring. The trail is divided into four sites, differing on their geographical features and landscapes. The Buzburun Peninsula, the Dacha Peninsula, the Ceramic Gulf and Carian Remote Place. Buzburun Peninsula Looks like everybody is experienced here. Everybody walked on the Turkish trails, and for me it will be the first time. The Carian Trail begins near Marmaris, in the resort settlement of Ijmeler, and immediately dives into the maze of trails, running through the overgrown slopes covered with pines. The first steps on the Carian Trail. The trees and bushes protect travelers from the sun. We haven't managed to walk a kilometer on the trail, as predicted, a torrential rain of 5.3 mm. Everything starts to flow. Let's go there. The sun appears, the track begins to dry out, but the bushes rising on both sides remain wet for a long time. It is pleasant to go, even after the rain, because the air is fresh. It is slippery and wet everywhere. The main thing, the trail is clean. The first village on the trail. Just in time for lunch. Standard menu, lentil soup, shorba, and cakes of tin dough with fillings. Guzzle me. Just a few kilometers from such a big tourist center like Marmaris, the virgin nature was preserved. And all because there are very few people living here. Only 20,000 inhabitants live on the entire peninsula. This place is not wild. People have lived here since time immemorial. And the proof of this can be seen at every step. Not far from the town of Turyong, at Cape Azarjik, overlooking the Bay of Kumlubuk, the ruins of the ancient city of Amos have remained. 
Fortifications, foundations of pagan temples and churches, and an amphitheater can be seen. Amos was founded by the Dorians, who came here from Rhodes, approximately in the 7th century BC. Up to now, little has been preserved. Tourists are rare here, so rare that the restaurant located on the seashore directly under the ruins went bankrupt. It's a good thing we did not have to look for a camping place for too long. It is possible to put tent on the beach directly at the foot of the cliff to the ruins. We need to sweat a little to clear a flat area. But finding firewood is not a problem. There is wood that was brought by the water on the beach. The trail goes along uninhabited places, but now nobody lives here. And before, there were both cities and villages. Ruins of the Byzantine churches, country houses and service constructions have remained. Do you see the arrow? Point. The trail crosses a small river. It is an occasion to make it halt and to boil tea. We're caught in pouring rain. We covered the tent with an awning. We hide and hope that the rain will come to an end. There is a lot of tourists, but they go without backpacks, with light baggage, and not through the entire Carrion Trail only on its short side adjacent to Marmaris. In the evening, they will return to the hotels and will sleep in heat, on pure sheets, but not in tents. Go there, there is no rain. A surprisingly dense wood begins. Weather is unstable, it's sunny, then it rains. We often have to make unscheduled stops. Second day in the rain. What have you found there, Violetta? <laughs> I have found a nice place to sleep. A tree between two grasps. The trail exits the forest and straight away the habitable places begin. It is necessary to close behind you, so that goats don't pass. There are also local residents, however, they are rare. Where are you from? Russia. Russian. There are no springs, but we found a well, very deep, and without a bucket. On the Carrion Trail, there are very few good springs, but sometimes there are deep wells. Now we try to get the water out and see what kind of water there is in these wells.
The water is normal, but we need longer arms to get it. So we drink well water? Yes, we drink crude water with cookies. Assembled in haste, the design proved unreliable. The rope broke. We dropped a kettle in the well. Why is it in plural? I also like it. If Katya and I are fetching it, that doesn't mean that we've dropped it. The kettle has drowned. We didn't manage to get it. Those who will go on the carry and trail later can also try to get it. And Valieri, Katya and Violetta continue their way with light baggage. In the next few days, we will have to drink only unboiled water. Here and there are scattered ruins of ancient cities and fortresses, as well as heaps of stones with obvious signs of machining. There are no beaches. The most part of the Buzburun Peninsula is occupied by steep rocky slopes, overgrown with forest, finishing with cliffs by the water. As we move to the south, the forest replaces the rocky wasteland. The trail runs along the coast, initially at some distance from the water's edge, and then it comes down to the beach. Before the Carrion Trail was paved, it was only possible to reach the Bosburun Peninsula from the sea with a yacht or a motorboat. Now it is possible to reach it by passing on the trail, although it is difficult, proceeding slowly through dense prickly bushes. Nonetheless, these efforts are not in vain. There is something to see, for each turn opens a new view, even more exciting than the previous one. In the villages in the continental part of the Buzburun Peninsula, villagers continue their traditional way of life, engaged in agriculture just as their ancestors did hundreds of years ago. How is the water? Normal, fresh, clean. Beauty. In coastal villages, the picture is different. They are densely built up with guest houses, hotels and restaurants. Having bypassed around the Busburun Peninsula, travelers have returned back to Marmaris. For Violeta Shanina, the journey comes to an end. She needs to go back to Moscow. And Valeri Shannon and Katya Klemankieva continue hiking on the Carrion Trail. Ceramic Gulf. From the town of Akyaka, the trail goes west along the northern coast of the Gulf. The woods are very dense and hard to go through. There is nothing heroic in climbing over it. But judging by the amount of the harvested wood, it is not like a reserve at all. The sea isn't visible, but the way isn't boring. The district is various. Rocks, olive gardens, woods and fields. Spring, middle of May, everything blossoms. And the mulberry also already ripens. The Russian people eat around the Turkish people, trees with berries. Towards the evening, the trail leads to the seashore. On an unnamed cozy bay, on the desert pebble beach, there was a place to pitch the tent. 
The trail rises by the Kieran Mountains. It passes through the villages tucked away in the fertile valleys. And again we make a fire. An iron mug replaces the kettle, which has rolled in the well. Soon it won't be shiny. The higher you climb, the better are the views of the Ceramic Gulf and the Dacha Peninsula, lying directly opposite. The trail passes over the ridge and down a small cozy valley. This place is not good for walking. They are rarely tourists. Locals continue to lead a slow lifestyle. Nobody hurries anywhere. There isn't many people, but everywhere the traces of their hidden presence are visible. These places have been inhabited for a long time and are cozy. The Carrion Trail returns to the banks of the Ceramic Gulf, near the resort village in the Bay of Akbuk. The whole coast is built up with hotels and guest houses. But if you go a little further, you can find a place for a tent right on the water. And the trail turns back from the coast towards the interior of the peninsula. Here we are lucky, the footpath before us is well trodden, if of course this is the right trail. From the pass, located at an altitude of 850 meters above sea level, opens a view of the town of Joren lying below. Is it scary there? Very scary. But the view is so great. Here, the Carrion Trail passes on the side of the ancient road. Once a very long time ago, caravans of mules were passing on it. On the location of the present Turkish town of Joren, in ancient times, there was the seaport of Seramos. From it was also given the name of the Gulf, Ceramic. In the town of Joren, the Carrion Trail forks. One branch goes west to Budrum, along the Ceramic Gulf. The second turns to the north, to the Carrion Remote Place. Carrion Remote Place. The ancient Greek historian Strabon wrote that, in ancient times, Milus was a simple village. In Labrenda, there is an ancient temple and a wooden statue of Zeus Stratia, revered by local residents and Milasiates. From the sanctuary to the city, there is a paved road nearly 60 stages long, called Sacred. The 14 kilometers long road described by Strabon still exists. On it, tourists are carried to the ruins of La Brenda, but the Carrion Trail goes straight, through olive groves, past the tiny peasant holdings, through godforsaken villages and people. Ouch, it is scratching! The city of Labrenda was part of Caria. In 545 BC, it was captured by the Persians, and in 334 BC, by Alexander the Great's army. The ruins of Labrenda are protected, but security guards almost don't speak English. They don't get enough practice. Foreign tourists rarely pass by here. Children use ruins as a playground. And peasants mow grass for cattle around them. 
archaeologists or at least traces of their hard work aren't visible. It is possible to be guided according to the plagues established among ruins, so it is possible to find out that there is an acropolis which hasn't been dug out yet, a stadium, a bat, a fountain, a memorial gate and several houses. The best place was occupied by the Temple of Zeus, surrounded by an ionic colonnade. It was a wooden statue of the god of thunder. According to the extant images on coins and reliefs, in his right hand he held a spear and in the left one a double axe, Labris. The town was named in honor of this axe. After La Brenda, the Carrion Trail winds between small allotments, under the feet of flat stone slabs. Some of them are stacked and extend on both sides of the fence. Absolutely wild places, never-ending fences. In Turkey, there are two types of mulberries, black and white. Black, of course, are more tasty. Valeri and Katya strayed from the trail a little and came to a public road. The main thing is that we're going up, in time. The truck driver offered to bring the travelers to the point of intersection of the road with the Carrion Trail in the Bafa Lake area. These places are inhabited for a long time. As archaeologists believe, the drawings on the walls of the caves are made approximately in the 6th and 5th centuries BC. As if I visited the Louvre, already in those ancient times people lived here. Later, ancient temples have been built, and then secluded monasteries in which Christian devotees hid from the world. The Bafa Lake about 60 square kilometers, one of the biggest in Turkey. On all sides, it is surrounded by cliffs, thickly strewn with giant boulders. The coast of the Bafa Lake is very flat and has swampy areas. The water has a slightly salty taste, but there is a lot of fish in it. All of the Bafa Lake area is declared a natural park and is taken under state protection. Fishing is still allowed, but it is already strictly forbidden to hunt. In ancient times, on the bank of the Latmos Gulf of the Aegean Sea, was the city of Yerakli on Latam. Later, the gulf became shallow, and after an earthquake, the level of the land rised and it turned into a lake. Now, on the ruins of the ancient city, is the Turkish village of Kapikiri. Many houses in the village are turned into guest houses for tourists. Locals also earn money by selling souvenirs. Latem Mountain is connected with the ancient Greek myth about the goddess of the moon Selena and the beautiful young man Endymion. Endymion asked Zeus for immortality and eternal youth. He received them. But on one condition, all this will be granted to him with eternal sleep. So he sleeps in one of the caves of Latum, beautiful and forever young. And every night, the goddess Selena looks in the cave to admire him. It was open. In ancient times, on the mountain, there were several temples dedicated to Selena and Endymion. Later, they were reconstructed in Christian churches and monasteries. In 1222, there were 11 monasteries here. In one of them, for a long time held the Constantinople Patriarch Afanasi I. The Carrion Trail runs along the scattered sections of the ancient road, which have been preserved up to now. 
It led from the internal regions of Kairia to the seaport of Yerakle. Previously, these places were densely populated, but now there were only numerous stones with traces of processing in scattered small Turkish villages. There are neither snack bars, nor shops, nor tea stands. The hospitality of locals helps out. They invite travelers for tea. In mid-May, all have switched to collecting pine cones. Wow, so many here. Then dry them directly on the rural street. They manually pick out the seeds. They are edible. The places are like resorts. The air is impregnated with aromas of pine needles and mountain lavender, the clean rivers, and nobody can be seen. Occasionally, the lodges are built of rough stones, but they are not inhabited. The trail leads to another village. There is a mosque in it. It is easy to recognize it from far away, by a high minaret. Near the mosque, there surely has to be tea. In the Turkish villages, it is so necessary. It's difficult to find out how much is the tea. The locals treat travelers not as clients, but as guests. Villages are rare. We often prepare tea ourselves, on a fire. And not only tea. What are you stirring? A soup package. Vegetables and seasoning with tomato. In the villages, the trail is sometimes lost. We have to ask direction from the locals, but not all can help. In the village of Tikiler, travelers are caught in the rain. Outside the village Tikiler begins one of the best preserved and longest fragments of ancient roads. Near the town of Karpuzla, ruins of the ancient city of Alinda have remained. In the 14th century BC, Hittites lived here. Back then, the city was known under the name Yalanta. Later, already under the name Alinda, it belonged to the famous Tsar, Moslis of Karya. They lived here in grand style. Money was not spared. They surrounded the city with a high stone wall. On the slope of the Acropolis, they build a theater. Under it, the market square filled with dealers. An agora rustled. Near Alinda, there is one more ancient city, Alabanda. On a straight line, between them, it is slightly more than 20 kilometers, but it is necessary to reach it by detour roads. The public transport is rare here. It is only possible to rely on hitchhiking. According to the legend, the city was founded by the mythical hero Alaband, son of Philip and Kaliroi. He was counted among the gods and was highly esteemed as a skillful equestrian. This can be evidenced by its name. In Carian language, Allah, a horse, and Ban, a victory. The city of Alabanda was included into the Isaorea Union. And during the Byzantine period, there was the residence of the bishop here. 
The Turkish village of Aravkisar is built directly on the territory of the ancient city of stones mined in the ruins. On the ruins of the city of Alabanda, the campaign on the Carian Trail comes to an end. And the world without visas project continues.